Mm-mm-mm. Okay. Are we up and running? Let us see. Hey guys, and welcome to the live stream. So it's been a while uh, since I've done anything. I've been away on holiday with a partner, so back to it now. And I've been inundated with lots of questions regarding some troubles people are having with playback in Cubase. So just going to take a look at some of these questions and try and answer them and help resolve some of the problems that you guys have been experiencing. So the first one I'm going to be taking a look at is by Mad13 and she's been having a trouble uh, with the media bay and let me just I'm just reading the comment here. Uh, she has Cubase LE AI elements 9.5 trial and Mad13 sent me a video of her dragging and dropping something from the media bay oh ignore this into here on the main project window and on playback not getting any sounds coming out now there's a number of reasons for this first is that you're because you're on Cubase the very basic version on LE elements you don't have all of the instruments and synths that come with the the full version of Cubase so when you drag and drop one of these presets into the project window because you don't have those instruments and that installed because you're on the light version you're not going to get any sound playing back now there's a couple of ways to check this the first is if you actually select the channel go to the inspector and then go to this top tab here if this section below MIDI inputs is completely blank then that means there's nothing loaded on that instrument track despite it being there and you can see the MIDI info if I started playing this you can see nothing's being played back now if I was to select something, uh, so what was that on Groove Agent or whatever it was and I press play it plays something back but I don't have the samples installed because I don't use Groove Agent so it's not actually going to play anything back anyway so um, yeah so that's probably the reason why that you can't hear anything when you're playing back through using something from the media uh, bay now if you want to check what instruments you do have um, if they have included it on the light version, I'm not exactly sure what Steinberg have included on the very basic version uh, then obviously you create an instrument track and then from your drop down list you have a look and then you select whatever's available and try and make something with that now let's have a look at some of the other questions I've been getting here what else have we had? so I've had an interesting one um, Actually, he's already found the uh, the cause for it, but we'll go through it anyway from James. Um, saying he's got a UR22 MK2, and all the inputs are set up, but nothing's recording. So, as you've, probably, as you've discovered already, James, um, it's always in, important to get the latest updates for Cubase, um, because... Each version has had like bugs. There's still even some minor bugs in the in the latest version, um, but it's always important to stay up to date, even with any DAW with the latest version, because it resolves a lot of the issues and some random things people might be experiencing with their particular hardware setup and their particular audio interface. So as you've discovered, the latest builds resolved your issue. Um, but while we're on the topic of recording audio. I'm going to go through a couple of scenarios with you here uh, that have caught quite a few people out um, that have sent me messages. So on your inputs, most of the time it's going to look like this unless you've told it otherwise. You'll have a stereo bus and then there'll be a left and right channel. Now if we was just to break this down so you guys can understand it, if, when you create a stereo track you're going to have the choice of either listening to both left and right channel or you'll have the independent choice of selecting the left or right channel and if you look over to the right here the left channel of the stereo image is going to be assigned to input 1 of our audio interface and the right channel is going to be assigned to input 2 so if you record something and you're using a stereo track 
This means that if I plug a guitar into input 1 of my audio interface, it's going to record into that left channel. So it's only going to be playing on the left speaker when I play it back, and you're only going to hear it on the left speaker, and you're not going to hear it coming through both. And the same goes to if you select, uh, sorry, if you use input 2 on your audio interface, it's just going to play through the right speaker. And this is something that catches a lot of people out because um, most of you are, you know, recording vocals or you're recording your guitar tracks. And and you're going, why is it playing back through one speaker? Now, when you're recording in general, you're using a single microphone. Most of the time, 99% of the time, it's in mono because you're using one microphone to record one source. And um, you do have stereo microphones, yes, and you do also have times where you use two microphones because you want to record the stereo image of something. And this would be a particular thing that you would use if you want to sum those two uh, channels to one track when you're recording. But most of the time, you're going to be using mono. So what I would advise you do is obviously make sure, like I've said in the past, that all of your input channels are in mono. And then when you're actually recording something, unless, like I say, you need you need a stereo bus uh, to record the input of two microphones, say for the cymbals or something like that, for drums, then you would use stereo, but otherwise you just use mono, okay? But even if you were recording something like drum overheads, you, you could just use it as mono tracks, have the individual control for each channel if you want to adjust the gain uh, to make sure they're balanced and then sum them to a stereo group or send them to a stereo group even. So, yeah, when you're recording, make sure everything is mono, okay? And then check over here you've got your right input selected for recording something. So if I open this up again, so let's say, let's rename this to, oh, not remove. Let's say input one of my audio interface, I like using it as recording the vocal. Let's name it vocal. Input two, let's say that's guitar. Okay. So from your drop down menu, let's say, oh, I want to record some vocals. Just so you don't trip yourself over, make sure you just select your vocal input. Or if you want to record guitar, you can record your guitar input. And that way you won't get confused. Because sometimes you might find you have an input selected and you're recording something and it's like it's nothing's coming through. You're scratching your head for ages, but really it's just because you've got the wrong input selected on your audio channel. So that's going to save a couple of issues for you guys as well. Uh, let's just have a look. So I've had another question. Uh, what system specs do you use to run your orchestral template? And that's from Ryle777. Um, my system in particular is not solely for audio. My system builds um, more to do with covering a number of different things, so audio, video, and graphics as well. Um, I only have 32 gigabytes of uh, RAM in my system, and I'm using a Ryzen 1 800X CPU, um, just because it's a very affordable CPU, it's very good, and it lets me run quite big templates, and I work a lot with MIDI, so I don't have to worry so much these days about recording live audio. If it, if it was a, a system that you needed to record live audio, I'd probably go with some uh, Intel-based system because the latency is better for recording. So yes, that's what I am using. Uh, let's just check the chat here, see if anyone's dropped us a message. Probably a bit early in the morning. A lot of people um, I've noticed uh, from across the pond that watch these videos. I'm just having a look. Uh, I've got one from Knox. Knox of Valhalla. Uh, I have a mic and interface. Is this enough to start recording a track? Please help. Thanks. Yeah, if you've got an audio interface and you've got a microphone, um, the only thing you need is. Uh, audio recording software it doesn't have to be Cubase. Um, if you're just starting out, I'd look for cheaper solutions just so you can get your head around the basics before you decide on buying a really expensive DAW. So I'd, I'd probably say something like Reaper because it's 60 quid, 60 dollars or something like that, and that'll be enough to get you started and recording. And, and you've got a big community that will help um, 
you know, support you and stuff um, if you're having any troubles with that particular software. So Reaper, there's also, um, there's a free version of, um, I'm sure it's Sonar. They got bought out by BandLab, if I recall uh, correctly. And you can actually sign up and get the full, fully fleet, fully fledged and featured DAW for free, um, which is really cool. So that might be worth checking out as well. Um, just so you can start recording audio. Let's see what else have we got here. A lot of these, a lot of the questions I tend to have are to do with their audio interfaces and playback and just little problems. And like I say, that. The best thing to do is to make sure your door's up to date and, and just triple check your inputs because that's pretty much 90% of the problem is that people don't check their inputs and on their actual tracks make sure that they've got the right inputs selected for recording audio. And also obviously check your outputs as well because if you can't hear anything, you can see everything, waveforms are being recorded and you know, you want to make sure that your audio track is actually going to an output. So if it's got no bus like that, it's not going to be sent to anything. You're not going to hear it anyway, despite being able to see all the information. Um, so you always need to make sure you've got your stereo output set up and everything is tickety-boo. Just scrolling through here, see if I can find some more... At the moment, I think a lot of the other questions I've already, I've already done videos for. Um, so I think for now, guys, we'll wrap this uh, short live stream up just to answer a couple of those questions that we've been getting in, re in, in regards to issues with the playback and also issues not hearing anything when you use something out of the media bay. So it's gonna be. I'm gonna be doing some more videos. Whoa, <laughs> we do some more videos uh, very soon. Now that I'm back off my break, and yeah, I've had some requests as well to do a couple of fly, a couple of what they call fly on the wall videos, where um, you just sit there, you start composing something, and people can watch your workflow and you talk through it all, and you know, you know, making a track and how you go about making it. So we'll do some of those videos in the near future. It's definitely on my list of things to do. And um, while we're here, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a shout out to Jason Graves. Um, if you're a massive fan of games like Dead Space or Far Cry, uh, Far Far Cry, <laughs> Far Cry Primal, um, Jason actually did the scores for those, and he's just started up a new YouTube channel actually called uh, Jason. I'll find it on here, and I'll. Oh. What am I? I'm clicking all the wrong things today. Uh, YouTube. Right, so if you go on YouTube, search for this guy. Jason Graves Music. He's an absolutely awesome composer. Uh, he's just started up this channel and there's going to be some really, really useful information here for all of you. He's going to be doing a lot of videos on composing. He knows his stuff. He's, he's worked in the business for a very long time and he's an awesome guy as well. Uh, so go go over to Jason Graves Music. Make sure you check him out. Subscribe to his channel and just be in awe of his amazing skills because he's an absolute beast. He's a really good guy. So there we go, guys. We're going to wrap the stream up on there. And um, I'll catch you all in the next set of videos. If, obviously, if you have any more questions with anything, be sure to leave them down below in the comments box. And also, you know, 
uh, send us messages, emails, whatever it is you want to do to get in contact, and I'll try my best to get back to everyone as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching, guys. See you all again soon.